Well, good morning, Lionhearts. How are you guys today? Happy Memorial Day. Um, hope you're having a great day. I, uh, I woke up early today, and I think I'm going to go out for a little walk right now. These, um, this pain medication they gave me has really got me depressed. It's like, I don't know, I need to get outside or something. It's just making me feel real gloomy. And, uh, but my friend John from John Juan is having a barbecue today over at his house, so I don't know if I can find somebody that wants to go that can give me a ride over there with them. Uh, maybe we'll go over there and hang out with John. He always throws great barbecues. Um, his wife, his family, everybody's awesome. His house is awesome. So I'm hoping that happens, but never know. Um, I've planned on what I'm going to do for the vlog. It's actually within walking distance for me, and uh, since I'm going to kind of assume that I probably won't get to go over to uh, John's and vlog anything over there, I'll probably end up going off and uh, I'll do the vlog early today. And what I was thinking of doing was um, a place that, from the moment that I started learning how to play guitar, I knew about. Um, I told you guys before that I learned playing guitar um, after seeing La Bamba. I was inspired to do music way before that, but to actually go out and get a guitar and want to learn, it was from La Bamba. And they mention where we're going to go vlog today in that movie quite a bit because it's where Richie Valens recorded his early recordings, as well as Brian Wilson's Pet Sounds, Brian Wilson's Smile, Good Vibrations... Uh, Phil Spector's Wall of Sound, all the Phil Spector stuff, and it was known for having a famous echo chamber. We're going to go to Gold Star Studios. Well, the grave of Gold Star Studios. This is a good one. This is an interesting one, but it's kind of sad. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, we're out and about, and we're going to go do the vlogging early because... Where this is actually located is a pretty busy intersection, and it's actually right there on the historic Route 66, right on the corner of Vine and Santa Monica. And since that's a pretty busy intersection for the most part, not only is coming out here early going to be beneficial to us, but the fact that it's a holiday will be too. And this, uh, I've actually never, I have seen documentaries showing in the background the little uh, section of where this is, but I never actually had taken the time to look up the address and match up. And it's actually a neighborhood and a place that I am at all the time. I'd say two or three times a week, so it's even more special to me now. It's now Sunset Gower, but this used to be Columbia Studios right here where we're walking along. Cool little yard pieces here. It almost looks like a dollhouse or something. That's straight out of a Dennis the Menace movie. Not exactly what you'd expect to see on top of a Hollywood Production Center roof, but pretty interesting. Things are massive. I really don't mean to build the anticipation a ton, but I just can't help it because when, when I tell you guys all the things that were done here and the history that's here, it's actually in all of the kind of studios and recording places that I've went to, this might be the most exciting for me. Well, sad but true, this shopping plaza right here was it. Right directly in front of us would have been 6252 Santa Monica Boulevard, the home of Gold Star Studios. It's Gold Star Recording, and it came to fruition in 1950 when a man named David Gold and Stan Ross put their names together Gold, Stan Ross, Star, Gold Star Studios. They started making recordings here, and it, this was a really unique place actually because this was another one of those places where the actual equipment was built by David Gold himself. All the equipment was custom built by him and operated by Stan Ross. And 
where I first, you know, mentioned to you guys where I had first ever heard of this was actually Richie Valens. This was where Delphi Recording used to host all of their early recordings. And they would have recorded Richie Valens here, uh, Bobby Fuller 4, and actually, <laughs> Eddie Cochran recorded here. So if you can imagine, back in the day, you would have had actually La Bamba, Donna, Summertime Blues, all that would have been recorded here. And then, in the 60s, a young man named Phil Spector started hanging out here, trying to get somebody to teach him how to record. And Stan Ross, for some reason like this kid, took him under his wing and started teaching him the essentials and the early parts of recording music. And this is actually where uh, the great wall of sound, Phil Spector sound, would be created. He would record all of those magical, famous recordings. The Righteous Brothers, You Lost That Love and Feeling, um, The Ronettes, Be My Baby would have been done here. I mean, the recordings are endless. Now let's go take a closer look across the street. Now, any other recording studio, just to have the Phil Spector legacy standing behind it would be mind-blowing enough. But if that wasn't enough, one of Phil Spector's biggest fans in those days was also Brian Wilson. And so this is where Brian Wilson ended up moving all of his recording operations from Western Studios over to here, and he started recording everything at Gold Star Studios. So good vibrations, pet sounds, the infamous Smile album that was abandoned was recorded here. And the whole reason that happened was because Brian felt that this was, that album was like a curse and that it was tearing apart the band. And then the night that they recorded the song Fires, in this neighborhood they actually had multiple fires that he found out about and that was just enough for him to close up and that was actually been a very pivotal point in the Beach Boys career um, I mean to think of that that all the Phil Spector stuff all the Brian Wilson stuff was done here but then even beyond that then in 1966 you also had Arthur Lee Re, um, recording his song, uh, the very first song, My Diary, that I mentioned in the Arthur Lee Love Vlog. And Jimi Hendrix was the guitar player on that, and that was actually Jimi Hendrix's very first recording. So this would have been the place that Jimi Hendrix made his very first recording. Now, not only did all of those people record here, but you also had Neil Young, Bob Dylan, John Lennon, Sonny and Cher, um, Inagata De Vita was recorded here. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and they actually operated from 1950 all the way up until 1984. And basically what happened was that um, the day and age just caught up with them. Um, it was becoming more and more affordable to create a recording studio and record in your home. And so in 1984, they closed their doors. And what's kind of interesting is that uh, for you Concrete Blonde fans, uh, J Johnette Napolitano was actually a receptionist here in the early 80s. And she was the uh, lead front woman of Concrete Blonde. But they closed it down in 1984, and then shortly after they closed it down, uh, there was actually a fire that happened here that destroyed quite a bit of the property and quite a few of the buildings. And they ended up demolishing it and creating this shopping plaza. Now what's sad is they couldn't even call this like the Gold Star Shopping Plaza or anything like that. For such a history, you'd think they would get some honor. I mean, we're talking, like I said, uh, The Who, uh, Leonard Cohen, Neil Young, the names are, I mean, these are legendary, Maurice Gibb from the Bee Gees. All those people were recorded here. It's insane. 44 years of tradition. And um, Gold Star Studios will always go down in history as one of the most important places that music was ever created. And uh, this was 
a very influential place also because this was where the creation of the flanger effect was. If you've ever heard of flanger on vocals or flanger on guitar, that was created here. And uh, David Gold actually was the one who created this, uh, this famous echo chamber that resided here. They were these gi two gigantic trapezoidal kind of steel pieces that they would uh, play the music down in between and catch this amazing reverberation. And that was kind of one of the trademarks of the studio for that day. And before we go, right there where it says uh, ABC Nails, that's the now physical address of what was Gold Star Studios, 6252 Santa Monica Boulevard. And as I'm leaving, I'm just sitting here thinking like, even beyond all the musicians that I mentioned to you guys, all the people that you would know of, it's mind-blowing to me even more of the people that you don't know of, or some of you may have, if you've ever seen the documentary on the Wrecking Crew, this was where the Wrecking Crew recorded everything. And the Wrecking Crew was basically this um, phenomenal set of studio musicians that Phil Spector put together to make all of his recordings. Brian Wilson loved him so much that that's why he moved over here to accommodate that many musicians. And the Wrecking Crew pretty much made most of their career recording here. And I can't wait to explore a little bit more of the history in this neighborhood because just on this block alone where Gold Star was, across the street is another two recording studios. There's another one on the left side. There's another one on the right side coming up up here. So there's a pretty vast history of recording up here. And uh, the one that I just passed a little bit ago, um, I actually years ago was walking into this surplus store. There's an Army Navy surplus store next door. And uh, I saw a limo pull up and for you guitar players, um, from Government Mule and the Almond Brothers band, Warren Haynes was uh, getting out of his limo going in there, recording there. I believe the recording studio there is called Nadine's. La La Land. Bambi? As if I'm ever given a choice. Now for a time, when I was in the um, vinyl reissuing industry in the early 2000s, there was a rumor that the um, trapezoidal plates from Gold Star were um, at Capitol Records. The Capitol Records building, they were using them for that recording studio. Well, we're home and there's a reason you guys haven't seen this guy. Because before I left, he kept bugging me and I offered to take him outside. He was sitting up here on the top of the pillow, wagging his tail and I said, come on, let's go, let's go. I must have said it 20 times and he wouldn't get up and move. So I finally tipped the pillow over. He walked over here and sat down there, still didn't want to get up. So I went without him. Now that's the pillow that I used to rest my arm on, and it looks like he's tried to take it over. Did you say hi to your friends? On YouTube? Well, I came home and took a nap, and then when I woke up I started thinking, I wonder what happened to some of the stuff that was in Gold Star Studios, like that echo chamber and the console that David Gold had built, and so I started looking through as much stuff as I could find online and I actually found a few answers and they were pretty interesting. Um, that console that Gold Star was known for that David Gold had built he actually when Gold Star shut down Herp Alpert had recorded all of his albums at Gold Star Studios and Herp Alpert wanted that console so Herp Alpert had the console taken over to A&M, it was used at A&M for years and then donated to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is supposedly where it's at now. Now the echo chamber, the owner, David Gold himself said that when the studio closed, he destroyed the chamber. He said, all that's left is the sound. He said, um, 
nobody that didn't work at the studio ever got to see it except for one person. He said the very last session that they had in 1984 at Gold Star Recording Studios was with Maurice Gibb from the Bee Gees. And he said at the very end of the session, he said, do you think I could see the echo chamber? And uh, David Gold said, well, under normal circumstances, the answer would be no. But since this is the end, I, you know, I, I guess I could let you see it. And he took him into the room and showed it to him. And Maurice Gibbs said, <clears throat> when I was a little boy, my brothers and I would sit in our room listening to all the songs that had been recorded here. And I always just wondered what that chamber looked like. I always wondered what it, what it was like. And it was always just a dream to see it. And he got to see it. So the echo chamber's gone. That sound will never be able to be copied again.